From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. I cannot believe some of the things that we're going to be sharing with you today. Uh, right up front I'm going to be referring to something that I talked about a couple of weeks ago and it's developing so very, very quickly before our eyes. But this first headline, like Israel, Arab allies of the United States fear Obama's deal with Iran. Oh, so many countries out there are saying, what in the world did he do? Why did he push this through? And then, U.S. raises fears of Russia and Iran as 300 defense deal. Well, they've got a deal going, too. That's Iran and Russia. And then, once again, China and Russia share massive database from hacks to use against America. It looks like they're piling it on, friends, and we need to be looking up and saying, oh, Lord, your coming is so very, very near. And the one who has been preaching this ever since I have known him is Jack Van Impey. In fact, the first time I ever heard him speak, he was well into his ministry, and I heard him uh, at one of the churches uh, where, where I grew up, and there he was. He was preaching on the second coming. What else? He's always loved to preach about the coming of the Lord and the signs pointing to it. And he's going to be back, the Lord willing, again next week. Oh, how I thank the Lord so very, very much. He's going to be sharing with you some of the things that happened to him and then going on with world headlines. And this week, I want to welcome back again our very, very dear friend, Dr. David Williams, who served Mount Hope uh, church in Lansing for over 30 years and around the world he has a global church with many many uh, all, actually the members uh, totaling about 80,000 around the world of the churches he has established in so many many countries and then something else I didn't really know about he has about 60 motivating and faith building bo books he sold about two and a half million of them so it is a joy to have him with us. And uh, we praise the Lord for his dear wife, Mary Jo, for your children, your grandchildren, and for your ministry. Thank you for coming today. Thank you, Rexella. I, I remember when uh, you and your husband first came to our church about two decades ago, and uh, we were having a graduation of some of the ministers that were in our training institute. And by the way, one of those accepted Jesus through a, a Jack Van Impey program. Oh, great. And what went into the ministry. And uh, I still remember you got up so graciously and said a few words about the fruit of the Spirit. And then your husband got up and, and motivated all these uh, leadership graduates, these pastoral graduates. And he had four points. He said, number one, know Christ. Number two, know the Word. Number three, know the Holy Spirit. And number four, know the times. Wow. And those four points are still top priority now. Amen. You know, uh, he's always had that goal. The Word of God, he's memorized about 18,000 verses and uh, all the New Testament and much of the Old and uh, he puts as his priority pointing people to Christ, the only way to heaven, and that one day Christ is coming back for his children. And it's wonderful to know that today. Oh, it is, and I'm so excited that he's going to be back in this chair yeah. next <laughs> week, and I'm going to turn on the program and, and watch. But you're right, Jack, uh, Dr. Van Impey has always taught that, and even at his 60 year anniversary that yeah. we held in Lansing, it was to honor him. 7,000 people packed into the church. We had a satellite uplink to download yeah. to all of our daughter right, churches. Right. But what was he concerned about? He was concerned about souls. He gave an altar call that night. He said it was one of the highlights of his ministry. Yes. And Rexella, three 
thousand people came to Jesus oh, that boy. night. Oh boy, I want to weep almost thanking the Lord for all the many times that he has led so, so many thousands, millions to the Lord, my oh my. Remember up front, I said that I was going to deal with something that I spoke about a couple of weeks ago. It's the billboards that the Muslims, the Islamists are putting up across the country. And uh, they're trying to combine Christianity and Islam. Now this one is in Atlanta. Find Jesus in the Quran. Now that is 345. I want to refer to that especially in just a moment. Find Jesus in the Quran? All right, here, this one's in Orlando. Same family, same message. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Mohammed. Mm. All right, and then going on. In Dallas, in English, one family, one message. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Mohammed. All right, then they put it in Spanish because of those coming across the border. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Mohammed. Now, you know, they said, find Jesus in the Quran. The Jesus in the Quran, we've said it over and over, and when he, Jack when it comes back, he's going to be talking more about this. The Jesus in the Quran is not the same Jesus as in the Bible because he does not claim to be the Son of God. He said, I never died on the cross. I never rose again. I'm not the Son of God. I'm not the Savior of the world. And I'm coming back to put uh, all those to death, the executioner, all those to death who will not convert to be a Muslim. Now, you know, Dr. Williams, I can't believe that they can overlook all of this in the Quran and say it's like Christianity. It isn't. It's nothing like Christianity. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. In other words, there's no way to heaven except through Jesus Christ. And Paul said, there are other Jesuses, there are other spirits, there are other gospels, there are other messages, but he said there's only one true one, and that is the Jesus Christ that was, always was, he is God, he was incarnate, conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived a sinless life. He died on the cross, not for his sin, right. but for our sin. He was raised from the dead, proving he was God. Amen. He ascended into heaven, and he promised to come back again. And he said some of the signs that would point to his coming again would be the very things you and I are seeing today. Uh, exactly. The things that he spoke of in the Word of God, in the Word of God is filled with, we're seeing right now as our headlines in this first one. Whoa, you know, the Iranian deal is still in the news uh, here and abroad. Look, Obama secures Iran nuke agreement. Oh, okay. Now, here you go. Like Israel, Arab allies of the U.S. fear Obama's deal. They're afraid of it, too. British foreign minister. No guarantee Iran won't build a nuclear weapon. Oh, my. There's no guarantee of that. Iran gloats over world powers surrender on nuclear deal. All right. Top Iranian cleric. U.S. still Iran's number one enemy. And Iran backed Houthis take several Americans hostage in Yemen. Now, of course, you know, that's hard for me to understand how we can overlook what Iran is doing, even taking our Americans hostage. And Iran promises to set fire to U.S. interests. I have a question I'm going to ask all of you. How can we make a deal, a peaceful deal, with a country that hates us so much? They say, we want to set fire to U.S. interests. We want to, we want to just cancel out uh, the United States. How can we make a deal with them? And I'm going to pass this off to you, Dr. Williams. How in the world can we expect to have a peace with them? Well, just like you can't have a peace making deals with the devil, the, the name devil simply means adversary. Uh, and Paul said, don't give place to the devil. That is, don't give him a foothold. Don't make any deals with him. And we can't make deals with adversaries that want to kill us. Look, if you're a dad or a mom, you want to protect your children. 
You want to protect them from adversaries. You want to protect them. And it seems like the leaders of the United States would want to protect the citizens of the United States. And one uh, writer for U.S. News & World Report, Mortimer Zuckerman, yes. called this Obama's unforgivable betrayal. Exactly. Exactly. You put it very well there, Dr. Williams. Well, you know, somebody else that's really standing up, or a country rather, and Jack's preached about this for a long, long time. In fact, I'm going to put on an excerpt from Jack in just a moment. How that the countries that are combining together Russia, Iran, Iraq, Syria, you know, all of those countries are planning to come against Israel. I want you to listen very carefully to what he had to say about this, please. Now watch it, folks. They are going to march in the Middle East under the title of Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh. And of course, that's Russia in the Greek and Russia in English. No doubt about it. Now watch it. It's the war of the latter years and the latter days. Could Russia and these nations march on Israel in the third century? No. The 10th century? No. The 17th century? No. They weren't there for 2011 years. They can march now because they've arrived and it's the war of the latter years and latter days when Russia makes the first move. Again, that's Ezekiel 38 verses 8 and 16. Now there's going to be an Arab Federation who joins Russia. That's right. And that's Daniel 1140, Isaiah 17, 1, Ezekiel 30, verses 5 to 7, and Psalm uh, chapter 83, verses 5 to 7. And what's the purpose? Let us cast Israel off from being a nation. Now here is why we're the generation. There was no Israel to invade in 48. There is now. And why do they go to war because of the division of Jerusalem. And that's Joel 3, 2. Both signs are here, 48. And then in 67, what's the battlefield of the world? Israel. Let's cast Israel off from being a nation that their name be no more remembered. That's the Arab world speaking. Psalm 83, verse 4. Now, Israel. Ezekiel 38, verses 8. 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice and 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29. 18 times where the generation, it's here. China is also going to come in after Russia f faces some defeat. And that's the kings of the east, the kings of the sun rising, British revised version, Revelation 16, 12. And they come right down to that place where ISIS is now battling, Iraq. Ladies and gentlemen, this is unbelievable. You see, there are three invasions in this battle called Armageddon. This is a third and final one, and they come from all nations against Jerusalem, Zechariah 14, 2. They couldn't do it till our day. There was no Jerusalem in Israeli hands until 1967. Now watch it. They get, as they're coming from the east, to get to the Middle East, to get to Jerusalem, to the Euphrates River. And boy, this is where the bloodbath begins. Loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. The number of the army was 200,000, 200 million. And by these three was the third part of men slain, killed, fire, smoke, brimstone, atomic warfare. Here's another shock. Prophecies 2,000 to 5,000 years old about atomic weaponry. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 30, Zephaniah 1, 18, Malachi 4, 1, Revelation 8, 7, and Revelation 9, 18. By these three was the third part of men killed. One third of the world. We are the generation for there's now in Israel and there's a Jerusalem over which to be fought. Well, you know, friends, with this in mind, should Israel be concerned? Well, absolutely. Take a look at this first headline. Israel concerned Hezbollah may get new Iran missile. And then, Hezbollah recruiting Fatah members to attack Israel. New Iranian clip shows destruction of Jerusalem by Muslims. A vice speaker, Iran supporting all movements fighting Israeli regime. Well, you know what? All this is about Israel. Merkel, well, this is, of course, the chancellor of 
Germany. She says, I'm disappointed by Iran's attitude towards Israel. Iran official will bolster our military until Israel is overthrown. Netanyahu, tyrant. Khamenei is wrong. Israel is here to stay. Netanyahu vows zero tolerance for terror. Friends, can you see where the Bible is being fulfilled? Right now, we're seeing the Bible fulfilled and pointing to the return of the Lord. Is that right, Dr. Williams? That's absolutely right. And you know, because it has gotten so bad and all these signs that have converged, you know, you, you need signs, speed limit signs, stop signs, signs, high voltage. And if you can't read the signs, you get in trouble. And all these signs are converging now, and it has led some to believe that we're already in part of the tribulation, but we're not. Two things have to happen first. Number one, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the catching away of the church, and number two, Daniel 9, 27, the signing of the seven-year peace agreement Amen. with Israel Amen. and probably some of the Muslim nations. Yes, absolutely. And this world magnetic leader will, the, the, one of the reasons the world will wonder after him is how did he bring peace between Israel and these Arab nations? Yeah, they're going to be fooled. They'll be fooled by this man. Deception will be uh, the order of the day Amen. at that time. Yes. How good to be looking up even in the midst of all this turmoil and the deception of this one that's going to come uh, into existence, I think, very, very soon. Fool, try to fool everybody. Well, you know, friends, we are going to be winding this up. Not too far in the future, but you need to have it because it's happening right now. Beware, faults. Prophets, who are they? Take a look at the commercial, please. Beware, false prophets, damnable heresies, and doctrines of demons are the final signs and dangers facing Christianity in the 21st century. The Bible warns that ministers will arise who will betray the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible calls them apostates, antichrist, and super deceivers, like Judas, who for the almighty dollar delivered Christ to the enemies of the gospel. That hour has arrived. Bible translators remove 91 verses claiming Christ is the Son of God from the Holy Bible for decadent versions created for Muslims. Does it matter? Shockingly so. Why? Christianity's foundation and major theological points have been destroyed by what the Bible calls doctrines of demons. This same group of blasphemers have obliterated the major Bible doctrines for salvation, including the deity of Christ, his virgin birth, his sacrificial blood atonement, his bodily resurrection, and his second coming. Who are these Judas Iscariots? Have they committed the unpardonable sin against Christ and the Holy Spirit? Order Dr. Van Empey's shocking video, Beware False Prophets, Damnable Heresies and Doctrines of Demons, and find out. Oh, friends, if ever you needed to have one of my husband's videos, this is the one. Christianity's foundation and major uh, doctrinal points are all being destroyed in so many of the pulpits across America and around the world. Oh, now, who are these Judas Iscariots, so to speak? Well, you need to know. So please, there's the 800 number and there's the address. I promise to get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Beware. And you know what? That leads me to another way, word. Be aware of what's going on in the world. Now, friends, a group truly hated in the Middle East, and I've mentioned this, is the Christian group. They're hated where, you know what? Faith in Jesus Christ was born. They're hated there. Christians face extinction amid sectarian terror, minister warns. Terrorists sing of slaughtering Jews and Christians. Here's something. It is dramatic, says Liberty Institute founder Kelly Shacklebord, of the recent hike in reported incidents of persecution. I've been doing these types of cases for almost 25 years now. I've never seen the level of attacks like these and how quickly they are now proliferating. Oh my, oh my, the persecution of Christians. Garisas, Christians told, worship here and you'll die. Well, you know what they did? The benches were full. They went into the churches and said, we don't care what you say, even under armed guards, we are going 
to worship. And then in Syria, Islamic State moves kidnapped Christians and they bulldozed monastery. Oh my. Now I want to hold this for a moment. I want a blue-eyed Yazidi. Teen describes Islamic State slave market. Now this was a 18-year-old girl. She was kidnapped. She managed to flee. And this is what she said. They tortured us, tried to forcibly convert us. These men are not human. They only think of death killing. They take drugs constantly. They seek vengeance against everyone. They say that one day, Islamic State will rule over the whole world. Oh my. Here you are. Yazidi, teenage, details how ISIS taught boys to kill and behead. Now this young man that they were teaching how to kill was 14 years old. And then this one, I cried when I read it. Child dressed as jihadi beheads his teddy bear. You know, he's at preschool age. They're teaching him how to behead. You know, friends, I can't even imagine. I have to fight my tears to imagine teaching a teenage boy how to kill. This is their slogan, you know, if you don't agree, you die. You know, Dr. Williams, I cannot absorb this. Kidnapping, raping, killing, teaching young preschoolers how to behead, it doesn't even make sense to me as human beings. How can they do it? Well, Jesus said when he was speaking about the end times in Matthew 24 that because iniquity abounds, the love of many will wax cold. Uh, some people won't even have love for their own children. Uh, Rexella, you bought both of my grandkids when they were born a little teddy bear oh, yes. that they loved. And I, I can't imagine teaching them to cut the head of the teddy bear off in practice for violating another human being. And that's what it is. It's violence. Um, and you know, violence isn't just uh, the raping, the, the kidnapping and all, but it's if you violate another person in a business deal, if you violate somebody, some other human being, you, you lie to them, you violated them. And so even the simple violence uh, that we're seeing in the world today goes back to Noah's day. God said it was that way in Noah's day before the earth was, was destroyed. And th the Lord said in Proverbs, there's six things he hates. And one of them is hands that shed innocent blood. Oh, yes, absolutely. And you know, uh, Pastor, we are seeing this so much in America right now. The murder mayhem. Have you ever noticed how much murder is happening right here in the United States? You know, it seems like everybody uh, has got a gun and they're going to kill somebody. Not everybody, of course, but so much of it. The murder mayhem. Now, that was on the cover of the Week magazine. Guns, social media, and the viral... Uh, mass shootings. This is something that we need to bring to the attention right here in America. Thou shalt not kill. One of the Ten Commandments God gave, a commandment, not a suggestion. That's right. And Jesus said, you can recognize somebody that is of the devil because he said, you're of your father the devil. Your will is to do your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning. Absolutely. The devil was a murderer. And that's how you can identify his work. Absolutely. And so we need to, from the pulpits, oh, pastors, priests, from the pulpits, Please be giving the Word of God, building the people up in their faith and teaching them the way that they should be living for the Lord. That's where it should be coming right now. Isn't that true, Dave? It, Our pulpits and, 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 and wherever they are preaching. Our pulpits and our homes. Oh, absolutely. Start when, with children. You know, that's what my mom did when I was like five years old. She would be reading to me, and it would always be a Bible story, something about how to live for the Lord. We need to be Amen. doing that. And I want to come to you right now and say, all of this shouldn't be getting us down. It should be making us look up, 
for the coming of the Lord. Jesus said, you're going to see all this before I return. But let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid, because I am coming again. Are you ready for that coming again? I've mentioned it so often. There are many, many things in our lives that we need to get rid of if we think the Lord is coming tomorrow. First of all, we need to open our hearts to Him and become His child. Have you accepted Him as your Savior, the Son of God who died for you? Will you pray this prayer with Dr. Williams right now to come into your heart, be your Savior, cleanse you of anything you don't want there? Dr. Williams. You can be sure that everything is okay between you and God, that when your heart quits beating, that you're going to be in the presence of Jesus. You're going to go to heaven. If you pray this prayer with me and mean it from your heart, say this with me, Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you. I confess to you that I've sinned. I've fallen short of your standard. And I ask you to forgive me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. He's your eternal son. And I believe he was raised from the dead. And right now I confess him as my Lord, ask him to be my savior and come into my life. Give me a home in heaven and a brand new start in life beginning now. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Oh, please write to me. There's my address. I'll send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. You know, something just came to my mind. Maybe you have been a Christian. Yes, you accepted the Lord, but you've drifted away. Maybe you're not really living for Him. Oh, please, may you walk with Him again. Live the life you know He wants you to live and keep looking up because the Lord is coming back very soon. Write to me. I want to hear from you right away. And now, whoa, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful, important offer of the week. Beware, false prophets. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Beware, false prophets, damnable heresies, and doctrines of demons. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so much, Chuck. Now, don't put it off. There's the 800 number and there's the address. You need to know who these false prophets are. So please call right away. I just want to say, friends, I love this closing thought. Our faith in God grows greater as we recognize the greatness of our God. Look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.